workers in the back, because we love those little construction workers. So my name is Andrew Karam, for those of you who I have not met, and a special welcome I want to extend to you uh, here at Mosaic. And the little kiddos, I would want to invite you to come up to the front, because you guys need to proclaim the scriptures to us today. So I want to invite up Hannah and Elliot. Is Elliot back there? He's sick again? I thought his fever broke. Oh, that's complicated. All right. Well, Hannah's welcome up here. And Benny, if he wants to come, is Hudson back there? All right. Grace and Mika and Raina are welcome up here if they want to come. No pressure. You're welcome, though. Hattie, you're welcome. Hattie, you can talk them into coming with you if you want. <laughs> Come on up, you guys. All right. Um, Kenny and Akai, what are, can you just tell me again the names of your friends in Singapore? Urson and Steve? Okay. Urson's mother. Okay, we're going to pray for Urson's mother in Singapore, and then we're going to... This is so great. And we're going to uh, talk about... Okay, hang on a second. Before we pray, the kids need to have a diversion. <laughs> Who likes lambs? <laughs> I see some smiles. All right. Let's pray. Like the lamb? Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to pray. Yeah, you can unpack that. That's fine. Just leave my books. All right. Let's pray for Urson and Steve. Father in heaven, as we um, continue to worship, we lift up to you Urson's mother in Singapore. God, we pray that your healing power would meet her right now that she would know your love and your care. And God, we pray for Urson and Steve that uh, you would strengthen them in faith, that you would meet them and all the family that's concerned for Urson's mother. And Father, reveal your healing power and glory in Urson's mother's life, we pray, so that we can just enjoy you and praise your name. For you are faithful in life and in death. You hold us in your hands. We love you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well. Today, we are on the fourth Sunday of a season that is called Lent. 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 And this is the season when we walk with Jesus to the cross. So the passages that we're reading, I know, it's pretty cool. Oh, you got the, okay, that means you're Samuel, Benny. You're going to be Samuel. So this story about David is actually also a story about Jesus. You, okay, all right, you can do that. So we're going to need some people to uh, volunteer to play different roles. So I need somebody to be Samuel. Are you going to be Samuel? To be Samuel, you've got to have the cow. Is that good? And you also get to have this. Can you take this to your mom, please? Oh, oh. Here, Benny. Caitlin, why don't you take the anointing oil and the cow? You need the cow for the sacrifice. Come on. This is a heifer, right? I need somebody to be King Saul. Who wants to be King Saul? No, of course nobody wants to be King Saul. Who wants to be the guy that got rejected? I need somebody to be King Saul. Somebody step up. You get a really cool scepter with which you can... All right, thank you, Morena. You can uh, command your enemies to be killed. That's great. <laughs> and uh, I need somebody to be King... Uh, not yeah, I need somebody to be the, uh, the youngest son. Of course. All right, Hattie, you can be the youngest son. So you've got to take your sheep, though you got to find a place to go look after your sheep. So everybody else is going to be another son. Uh-oh. All right, so here's the deal. Here's our context. Uh, Saul. Saul had been... Oh, it's empty. Look at that. You can pull those out. Here, we'll put this on the, on the floor for you, so that way it won't fall off and hit you. Okay, so Saul had been selected by God to be the king of his people, but... Saul was originally uh, chosen to be king because his people said, it's too hard for us to have the living God be our king. So all you people right here, all the kids, can you repeat after me? Say, it's too hard for us, it's too hard for us to have the living God as our king. We want a king like all the other nations. Oh my goodness, it was awful. So Samuel... When you cry, what do you do? What kind of sounds do, do you make when you cry? Yeah? All right, you say, ah. So can you guys cry like Samuel? 
It's sad. It breaks God's heart. It breaks God's heart when his people say, we can't, we, we can't trust you, God. It's too hard to trust you. We want a king like all the other nations. But God, in his wisdom, selected Saul over here. So Saul says, I also don't really trust God. I will become also the priest. I will offer the sacrifices that only the prophet is allowed to offer because, frankly, I don't think that God's anointing is enough. Saul had this problem where he was too small in his own eyes. And you know what happens when we're too small in our own eyes? We have to make ourselves look big, and we have to fake it. Anybody experience that in your life? Yes. I'm insecure, so I've got to make everybody else feel like I'm big. It's terrible. So Saul now rebelled against God. Say, I have rebelled against God. But my sons will be the kings. kings. Right, and he has a scepter, right? The scepter represents authority. In the in the Persian world, I don't I don't know if Saul used a scepter specifically historically. Don't this is not a historically accurate message. (laughs) But the kings had the authority to kill their enemies, to rule through force of arms. Well, Samuel was very, very sad because he had anointed Saul, he had tried to lead Saul. And now Saul had rebelled against the Lord, and the Lord had rejected Saul from being king over Israel. So Samuel was doing what any little kid will do about dinner time when he is not being fed. He was weeping and mourning and crying. So let me hear you guys. Can you you mourn and weep? Oh, this is terrible. Yes. It's so fun when the kids get to be dramatic. It's good. Mariam, did you want to join us? You're very welcome. No, Ari, I just, I just wanted to make you know you're welcome. Okay. So, um, so then the Lord says to Samuel, Samuel, why are you weeping and mourning for Saul? I've rejected him as king. There are times in our lives when it's actually time to stop mourning for the past. God is saying it's a new season, and you need to look forward. And so... So God says to Samuel, Samuel, I'm going to send you to go uh, to the king that I've selected. But of course, Samuel knows that Saul is still in authority. So Samuel is scared. How can I go and choose, uh, choose another king who's not from Saul's line when this is like, when Saul could kill me? This would be terrible, right? So, uh, so Samuel... Samuel, can I, can I pick him up? All right, all right, hi. This is, this is Benedict. Also, your name is Samuel today. Yeah, she's like, I don't like this. I want my mommy. Okay, you can go see your mom. So Samuel says to the Lord, what am I going to do? So the Lord says to him, take a heifer. Take a heifer. What does a heifer say? It says, no, that's right. Take the cow. And go to this, home, this, this the town of Bethlehem to offer a sacrifice. Isn't that odd that the Lord God creates this like conspiracy cover for his plan? He's like, I know you're afraid. I know. And yes, King Saul is dangerous. So King Saul's not going to get in the way of a sacrifice. Take the heifer and go do a sacrifice. It's the secret agent plan that God has to cover the, uh, the selection of the new king, who's a threat to King Saul. So Samuel shows up at Jesse's house. Now, Hannah, are you going to be Jesse? Do you want to be Jesse? She's like, I do not know what's happening here, <laughs> which is totally fair. That's why. Yeah, how, how could you? Okay. So uh, Mika, would you like to be Jesse? No. No. All right. Good. All right. Grace? All right. So you, when, when you see Samuel, you freak out. You are very afraid. You don't know why the man of God is coming to see you. So what do you say? Do you come in peace? You ask him. Do you come in peace? And he says, I come in peace to offer a sacrifice. So get yourselves ready. We're going to have a sacrifice. So then they do. They get the sacrifice together. And Samuel is beginning to think now, how is God going to show me the one that he has chosen? So then the sons of Jesse start coming by. Now, the first one would be the eldest, in this case, Micah. And everybody would expect that Eliab, Jesse's oldest, would be the next king. He is the ruler of the family next to his father. He, um, he's the one that should be chosen. Everybody knows this. But the Lord says to Samuel, 
Do not consider his height or his appearance, for I have rejected him. Human beings look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Samuel is shocked. He goes on to the next one. You are Jesse, right? So, uh, so Hadi here, you're going to be Aminadab. Aminadab comes up, and Samuel's thinking, ah, oh, it's got to be Aminadab, obviously. Like, if it's not the first, it's going to be the second. The Lord says, nope, I've rejected him. And Hudson, oh, wait, no, who's David? Hattie's David. Oh, man, I'm confused. Sorry, guys, I lost it. So Hudson comes. Anyway, all six of these boys come by Samuel, and the Lord says, no, I've rejected all of them. So then Samuel's confused, and he says, where, uh, do you have any other sons? And what does Jesse say? Yep. yep. Where is it? Tending to the sheep, which means this young guy wasn't even important enough to come to the sacrifice. The youngest of the family, not important enough to come to the sacrifice. So then Samuel says, well, go get him for me. So Hudson, you get to be David, right? You've got the sheep. You're looking after the sheep. You know, you have to be so brave to look after sheep. You know why you have to be brave? Can you tell me somebody that likes to eat sheep? You know, any animals that like to eat the sheep? What one? <laughs> this is good. We're, we're very calm. Yes, lions and bears like to eat sheep, and you have had to fight them off because you're so brave. And wolves like to do that too. So David comes, and God says, this is the one I've chosen. And as a little, like, humorous note, the Bible tells us, also, David was very healthy and good-looking. The Lord doesn't look at the outside appearance, but ha he chose somebody who was good-looking. Kind of an odd note, isn't it? So then, Samuel, where you at, Benny? You got your anointing oil? Okay. Can you go and touch Hudson with the, anoint, with the bottle? Just, just tap him up. Just maybe tap, give the bottle to his mom. And Samuel goes and anoints David king. And the Bible tells us that when David gets anointed with the oil, the Holy Spirit falls on David. Everybody know the story now? We're good? Okay. Let's fast forward a couple hundred years, a thousand years maybe. And now we have a different king. This king is actually worse. All right. So this king now has two scepters. Can you stand up, please, king? Your name... Would you want to be Pilate, or would you like to be Caesar? Yeah. Go for Caesar. Okay. All right, good. All right. So, so stand up. So, say, I am Caesar. I am Caesar. The son of the God. The son of the God. And I am the great high priest. And I am the great high priest. Indeed, it's true. The Roman ruler after uh, Julius Caesar, so... Uh, name was Augustus, Octavian originally. He proclaimed that he was the son of the God, and he took up the title of Pontifex Maximus, which is the great high priest of his people. And he set himself up as the greatest authority spiritually and politically in his empire. Yeah, he should laugh at him because we know the living God laughs at stupid human rulers like that. So the Lord also sends his prophet, if you will, John the Baptist, to go. And oddly enough, something happens during a particular sacrifice, right? When Jesus is betrayed and goes to the cross, what sacrifice is happening at that time? He is well, that's the crazy thing. He's dying for our sins, and there's another sacrifice that happens at exactly the right time, and this one involves, don't hurt me, Hannah, sheep. What sheep is being killed at the time of Jesus? What's that? Lamb. Yeah, the lamb. What? And why were they killing the lamb at the time when Jesus died? The Passover. The Passover. There it is, and it's true, Addie. You're entirely right. They were killing the Passover lamb because Jesus is the lamb of God, but they didn't know it yet. It was a secret. So during the sacrifice, the people of Israel would proclaim the reality that God delivered their people from Egypt, from the false gods and from the awful, oppressive power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 
And the Passover sacrifice was pointing to something that nobody ever would have expected. And under the cover of that sacrifice, something remarkable happened. The leaders of Israel, the leaders of God's people, were, this is very hard, just like David's older brothers, rejected. Rejected because their hearts were not right before the Lord. And so you could imagine leaders from the temple coming up before the Lord and the Lord saying, no, you are not the anointed leaders. You are not my kings. You could even imagine people from the countryside coming up before the Lord and saying, God, we have been living holy lives. We've been trying to follow your teachings. We've been trying to make your whole people holy. And the Lord's saying, no, there's another anointed king, actually. The Lord had rejected them. And so just like David's brothers came before Samuel, and the Lord said, no, do not look at the appearance, because the Lord looks at the heart. So all of the rulers of our world stand before the living God, and he says, no, do not Do not respect them because of their seminary degrees. Do not respect them because of their political connections. Do not expect them to represent me because of anything about their appearance. For God looks at the heart and all of humankind has fallen short. But one. And that one, the prophet Isaiah tells us, you go to Isaiah chapter 53. Let's read this. This is pretty great. So it says in in Samuel, right, that the Lord looks at the heart and not at the outward appearance. And then in Isaiah 53, it says this, that the Lord's servant will grow up before God like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. This time, there's no joke. It's not like God says, hey, we're not going after the big, strong, good-looking guy, and then he chooses a small, good-looking guy. This time, the Lord God chooses the one who is rejected by all. Jesus Christ, tortured and crucified, publicly shamed, stripped of all dignity. He is the one, the Lord's anointed. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, and the heart of Jesus Christ is his heart that is utterly faithful to God. When all of us turned away from God, Jesus Christ was faithful. His heart fulfilled all righteousness in his life. Praise God. And so God has chosen Jesus. And we know from the scriptures and we know from life that in Jesus Christ, or on, like God has poured out the Holy Spirit anointing Jesus Christ. And when we are united with Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Praise God. And so we see that the story of David and the story of Jesus overlap. So that the true story of our lives and the true story of David is the story of Jesus Christ, the faithful only son of God who took our humanity on himself and as God's anointed went to the cross and was rejected by all yet chosen by God. And he is God's true king. Now, as we said, if we belong to Jesus then we also share in that anointing. God has chosen us to rule with Jesus. These kids, as they grow up, will learn how to follow Jesus as king, not just to follow him as people might follow great teachers like Brene Brown or whoever else you might love to listen to, all of your science people that listen to the great psychologists. That's great, but we don't follow Jesus like we follow them. By God's grace, we are incorporated into Jesus. We become part of Jesus' own body. The anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Christ dwells in us. And so the anointing that fell on David and points to Jesus, finds its fulfillment in Jesus, we too are anointed to live under the authority of Christ and with the authority of Christ. 
And this is where I think I personally feel the challenge of this kind of a text. Because if I think about my life, I don't think it's easy to own and to live in and to believe God's anointing on us. We think about God's anointing as some people are anointed over here and some people are less anointed. And that's not what the scriptures teach. We should actually cry about that. That's true. Because it's just awful. How could it be that some people could be in Jesus and not be anointed? That's not even possible. Jesus is God's anointed king. If we belong to Jesus, we are anointed with power and authority by the Holy Spirit. And so if you're a person who's, who's here today and you think, yes, I, I believe Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. I am trusting him for my salvation. I want to be faithful to him. I am gonna, I'm seeking to die to myself daily. I'm trying to, to deny myself and pick up my cross and follow him. My friend, even if you don't feel like you are anointed, you are anointed by God for good work that God has prepared for you to do. And I want to just ask for a minute, like, who are the voices in your life that are like Saul and like Caesar? Who are the voices that say, I'm going to tell you the truth about where the power resides. I'm going to tell you who God really is. And you're not anointed. You're not anointed. Who has the authority to, to say that to you? There are many voices today, right? I was thinking, you know... We were talking about this at the retreat a little bit yesterday. Like, on the one side, there's the, there's the king that says, you have to have your life together or people will not respect you. If you're a true man, you will be the model of success. But Jesus died on the cross. He's king of kings and lord of lords. What's this about, right? You can think on the other side about... Uh, <laughs> Train of thought, come back. <laughs> right, you can think on the other side about uh, career, life purpose, and this kind of thing, right? Say, so well, if I don't know what my job is, if, you, if I don't know what my career and vocation is, how can I be really anointed by God? And we can give our money, our status, all these things. We can give these things authority, but God says, no, those are not the rulers. Those are not the kings to follow. The one that we follow is... Jesus Christ on the cross, crucified, right? Jesus Christ crucified, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he, he holds all of the pleasure of the Father. The Father is delighted in Jesus. And in Jesus Christ, the Father is delighted in you. And so I want to ask you today to embrace the anointing that God has given you in Jesus Christ to live in, under the authority of Jesus and to let Jesus tell you the truth about the other sources of authority that are trying to lead you away from him. Reject them, bow before Jesus, and let his anointing and the Father's pleasure fill your life day by day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's we'll take a moment to reflect and the kids can walk around. I love it that you can take your pants off. I can't do that. <laughs> Uh, so the kids are going to walk around. We're just going to reflect for a little bit on how we want to respond to the Lord, and then we're going to come up to uh, celebrate communion together. So Father in heaven, thank you that you are speaking to us. We ask that you would identify the kings in our lives that we are bowing down to that are not you, and we ask that you would uh, empower us to repent and to re reject those false kings, those false gods. And we pray, Father, that you would give us faith and grace to receive afresh the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can just take some time to pray in the presence of God right now. <clears throat>